Do you have a defended heart space? Do you find it hard to trust people, find yourself guarded or closed off to life? Do you find yourself critical of yourself or others? And these are signs that your heart space is defended. Now, this isn't about having to pry open our heart space, but often a defended heart space is a place and a coping strategy to protect ourselves from hurt. But when we protect ourselves from hurt by closing ourselves off to life, we close ourselves off to joy, compassion, community, and to our spirit. In this video, I'm going to share with you some telltale signs that your heart space is defended and some gentle tools to invite back into your spirit so you can feel safe opening up your heart to yourself, to others, and to life. I find that having a defended heart is one of the most common things that I see with my clients who are looking to create relationships, connections, community. They usually call me for a reading or mentoring and feel alone. What I often see is that they have been hurt in one way or another by life, by others, by relationships, and feel hurt or betrayed by the universe. And as a protective mechanism, they've built walls around their heart and themselves as a creative strategy to navigate through what it means to be in a human experience. And the most interesting thing that I find with my clients and people that I connect with who are in a wounded, defended heart space is that they are often really hard on themselves. They're many telltale signs that your heart space is defended. But the number one tell that I see so often is a lack of compassion for themselves and for the people around them. Now, before I go any further, hi, I'm Sonia. I'm a fourth generation intuitive, and I teach you how to look back into your innate divine self, your intuition. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. If you're returning, welcome back. Don't forget to hit subscribe like, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And before I go any further, I'm so excited that I'm going to be teaching a free workshop coming up September 13th. Check out the information below. I would love to have it in there. If you can't make it live, I'll be sending out a replay. So if you're interested in cultivating your intuition, your spirit, opening up your heart, connecting to your guides, this will be a jam packed workshop for you because I love nothing more than to support you on your journey. So we're talking about defended heart spaces and it's really interesting because this, the past few weeks I have connected with um, some people either that I've been passing or people that I care about where I've really recognized their wounded defensive heart spaces. And the first one, I want to tell you a story. I was in Colorado a few weeks ago and I was taking an Uber. I had had a hard night. I had my own meltdown and was taking an Uber to go meet my partner. And I was sitting in the Uber with this gentleman. We started chatting. We had a very interesting conversation. But one thing that he said to me was, that he often finds that when he's listening to joyful music, that he'll start crying and feel really sad. And he's like, I pull my Uber over to the side of the road and, you know, have these moments. And what I'm really recognizing is that I need to listen to more of this music and, <laughs> and really kind of have exposure therapy to sort of change my reaction to this. And it took a minute and I thought about it. And the first thing that I said and noticed was I was like, that is your creative ego intellect that is believing that if you are harder on yourself, that if you force yourself to do something, then you'll have a different experience. But I invited him to kind of shift his perspective. And I said, you know, we can recognize that that reaction comes from a place of pain. 
And what I sense and feel is that you're probably feeling really lonely. And instead of having to force yourself to be joyful or to be different than you are, maybe that we can invite in these pain points to bring in compassion and gentleness that will actually create a different experience. And he looked at, he like whipped his little head around and was like, huh, that is super interesting. <laughs> and I tell that story because I find often with people who have defended heart spaces that it, you know, life is hard. We go through different tragedies, traumas, whether it's relationship, whether it's life, whatever it is. And that there's a part of ourself that feels that in this hardening that we have to be hard on ourselves to create a different outcome. And we don't. The thing is, is when we have been hurt, this is the most important place that we can invite in our spirit, our guides and softness and heart-centered compassion first for our own experience that then we can extend to others. You know, the love that we give and cultivate for ourselves, the gentleness that we cultivate for ourselves then spills over into others. Now, if you're wondering if you have a defended heart space, the first thing that we can tell is that you feel suspicious of others, that you don't trust them, their motivations, that you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. And that is a place of protection and comes from a place of pain. When we often feel that we can't trust others, that often means that we also have to couple this with a place of discernment. Have we give others more credit or trust or are we not seeing them for who they are in the present time and their capabilities instead of overly extending ourselves and hoping for an outcome that isn't that is different uh, i know to be true in my own life and in my own practices the more that i can be organized on the earth plane and see people as they are instead of how i would want them to be helps us to adjust our expectations of the people that show up in our life so that we can have better relationships and connection so First, you know, who is in your life? Are you seeing them accurately? Are you seeing all of them? Or is there a part that can be overly hopeful, overly generous, and give people trust that they haven't necessarily earned? Uh, when we can be organized in this place, then we can actually start to extend ourselves in a way that is safe for our heart space and invite in connection for others. Second, like I said, when we can tell that you have a defended heart space is that you're really critical of yourself and that you're critical of others. I have a client of mine and we were talking and she's been through a lot of different things uh, in her life. She's had a lot of different traumas, a sudden death of a parent and has had to really muscle through and has been very creative and felt very alone. And she's telling me about how hard it is when she talks to some of her friends or other people where she feels either tinges of jealousy or lacks compassion for their experiences. Now, in recognizing that, we can also see that that is a source of pain. If you're lacking compassion for somebody else's experience, you know, it is often a place where you are, we are creatively comparing what somebody else has gone through to ourselves and minimizing their experience. We have to recognize that people are universes onto themselves. And when we can like I said, first have compassion for our own experience that maybe gone through something that is more difficult. Then we can extend that compassion to others. Compassion is important because it connects us. It allows us to say, I feel your pain. And whether or not we can relate in that, that is a mirroring and a place of healing. When we also have a defended heart space, 
But we often, you know, what I see with clients is they will often try and muscle through and get into a lot of figure it out. You know, when uh, we've been hurt, we often feel like we have to do things alone and that we can't trust or rely on the support of others on the X plane, friends, family members, um, you know, our wider support communities. And often, comes to a place where we also feel mad and can't trust our own spirit or the universe or life. And it's okay to feel mad. It's okay to have different emotions that come up. But in recognizing that emotions come in as sensations into our bodies and they tell us what is important to us. And when we can discern that those emotions don't always have to logically make sense, but give us information This can be a practice of where we can invite in slowness, where we can invite in compassion, and where we can connect to our own heart space. A big tool that I often use for my mentoring clients who are really struggling with having walls around their heart is that they often see themselves through a really negative lens and suffer from what I call death by a million paper cuts. Because when life hardens us, we end up being even harder on ourselves that then extends as the lens from which we see the world. So if we can start to shift that lens and instead start to name three things that we love about ourselves, three things that we're grateful for, three things that we're proud of, that starts to shift our focus from what's not working to what we know to be true, what we love, what we're proud of that anchors us back into our spirit, into our center, and to our sense of self. So if you're struggling with a defended heart space, the number one thing that I'd say is be patient, be kind, be compassionate, because that is a place of suffering. You don't need to pry your heart space open, but to start to invite in gentle support, to connect with your body, the sensations and the emotions that come with it, which can often sometimes be grief, sadness, disappointment. And when we can face those head on and recognize that emotions come in and out like waves and that when we can, instead of paying attention to the narrative of the ego intellect, but to come back to the physical body of even just doing a body scan and saying, where do I feel that in my body? Do I feel it in my throat? Do I feel it in my heart? Do I feel it in my chest? Do I feel it in my root chakra? And bringing our attention there, anchoring it, hand on your heart, hand on your belly, starting to take a breath, and even inviting these sensations to speak to you just as I am now. And you can even say, what are you protecting me from? And as this, these places in your body start to speak, They might say, I'm protecting you from shame. I'm protecting you from disappointment. I'm protecting you from hurt. Whatever might come up. Instead of saying, oh, you don't need to do that. Acknowledge and appreciate these human parts that are doing the best that they can to help you navigate through life. As we really extend an appreciation anchored into our spirit, we can start to engage into a conversation and start to peel back these layers of responsibility that we hold unconsciously in our bodies. And that's where the thaw of our heart space starts to happen. Uh, And if you're really struggling with connecting to your heart space, a really another beautiful practice is think about somebody that you love wholly. This might be a family member. This might be a grandparent. This might be a friend. The one that I think of immediately is my niece that just lights up my whole heart space. I just love her so dearly. And when I can first focus on that love and really cultivate that feeling within my body, then I can turn that attention and shift from another person to ourselves. Like I said earlier, the love that we give ourselves is the love that we share. And so in having this practice, this heart-centered compassion practice, it will start to connect and reawaken those places that feel defended, that feel unworthy, and not enough so that we can start to share that love with others. And last, what I also really love to do to anger in this practice is to even have a simple, give yourself a hug, wrap your arms around yourself, 
closing your eyes, anchoring into your spirit and just telling yourself, I love myself just as I am. I love all of the different bits. I love all of the pieces. I love the mess. I love the magic. And all of it is welcome here. And the more that we can start to give ourselves that grace, the more that we can extend that grace to others. Know that you are doing a good job. Know that you are enough. Know that you are worthy and be patient with these places that have been painful instead of having to muscle through. You are not alone. Call on your angels, call on your guides, and know that they are only a breath away. And that all you have to do is look for the signs, symbols, and little the the uh, red trail crumbs that they leave for you. Be loving. Buy yourself some flowers. <laughs> Be patient. Give yourself the love that you haven't received from others or for life. Fill yourself up from the bottom up. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And just know that I love your spirit. I love your heart space. And even if we haven't met, know that you are a treasure and deserve to be treasured as such. And that starts with you. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that I get to see you in my class. And I'm sending you a giant hug. You're doing a beautiful job. I will see you next week. Don't forget to check out the information box below. Book a reading with me. I do mentoring. Um, yeah, I have lots of tools to help support you on your journey. Follow me on Instagram and uh, I'm sending you all my love from my heart space, my spirit to yours. Bye.